Now, question six in the textbook, it actually scaffolds it a lot for you. There's like a part A, a part B, a part C, I think. But I actually just want you to think with me if the question for this was just graph. If that's all you were told and there was no scaffolding, okay? On a normal graph, what kind of information is important to put on there? Just shout some things out. Say that again. Okay, so I'm gonna look for uh, turning points are gonna be pretty useful. What else? I'm gonna need intercepts. Points of inflection are probably going to be handy. If we had something which had asymptotes, then they would be re uh, relevant, but for this graph you're gonna find in a second, there are none, okay? That's good, we're gonna do calculus to find out all of these things. One quick thing before we launch into it, does this look familiar, this particular form? Do you remember this from a topic last year? What kind of topic gave us equations that looked just like that, do you remember? This is an auxiliary angle, do you remember? So if you, if you remember what we saw before, when you add two wave functions like this, you get, you get another wave function that's like, like bigger, and it's also been like shifted across, uh, left and right. That's what the auxiliary angle is about. I only point that out just so you have a rough idea of what to expect when we get there, okay? So, let's get going. I'm actually gonna suggest we start out working intercepts, because you don't need calculus for that, do you? Okay, so, to begin, uh, let's do x-intercepts. X-intercepts occur when, when y equals zero. Can you go ahead and work out what the x-intercepts are? Let's go from naught to two pi. That's a, that's a good, do, is that's, that's probably the domain, right? Naught to two pi. I'll give you a minute to have a go at that yourself. Oops. Go ahead and work out your y intercept while you're at it. Yep. Oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Do I have some solutions for the x-intercepts? Do I have some solutions? How many solutions are you expecting? I'm expecting in this domain. Hmm. So, standard domain, naught to two pi. And so if you wanted, you could use this guy, right? If you want, it's not the only way, but it works fine. 10 is negative, so which quadrants am I in? Second and fourth these guys. So now that I've got the quadrants out of the way, I can not worry about the sign. The sign just tells me about the quadrants. So if I think about one on root three, if you went to your calculator, because you couldn't remember your exact values, you could go shift hand of one on root three. Now I will point out, you're probably thinking, rightly, uh, I should be in Radians mode because I'm gonna be calculating derivatives and all that kind of thing. However, if you're working out exact values, because Radians all are in terms of pi, you're gonna get weird decimals at the end which you might not recognize. So if you're trying to find out what this is, it's totally okay to be in degrees, just remember to come back. Has someone got the answers for me? What's the base angle? What's the base angle? 30 degrees, so that's pi on six. So pi on six in the second quadrant is gonna be pi take away pi on six, yes? Yeah, so that's going to be five pi on six. In the fourth quadrant, pi on six is going to become two pi, take away pi on six, yeah? So that's gonna be 11 pi on six. All right, so I'll just keep them in the back of my mind for when I put these onto the graph. There are my x-intercepts, and I've got two of them. 
y-intercepts, they're easy to find, substituting x equals zero. By now we should know what cos zero is, it should be cos of zero, cos of zero is one, plus root three times sine of zero, sine of zero is zero. So there is my uh, y-intercept, okay? Now I do not, bless you, I do not have enough space on my board to actually have my, my graph going as well, but if I were you, I would start now to draw your set of axes, draw it from naught to two pi, and um, I'm gonna start to put this information on, I'm going to assemble it as I go. I'm gonna do a really awful rough version over here that I'm gonna replace, just so I don't have to remember everything. So if I've got my naught to two pi, uh, let's put two pi somewhere over here, two pi. I want to have some rough markers so I know where to place these values, for instance. So I'm going to chuck pi right there in the middle. So now I've got... Yep. Um, for the x intercepts, x equals 5 pi on 6 and 11 pi on 6. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to write this the way it is because this equation here, x can only take one value or the other. But the way I interpret that is for the graph, it has both of those as solutions. Okay. So I'm going to put 5 pi on 6 there just before pi and 11 pi on 6 there, just before 2 pi, and then I've got 1. I'm going to put that somewhere like that. So, I've got some points of intersection. Great. What were those other things you told me I needed to find? You listed them for me, right? I'm going to need turning points and points of inflection. Now, I'm going to put you to work for a minute. How do we find turning points? We, we differentiate and use the first derivative, okay? How do we find points of inflection? We're going to have to differentiate again, use the second derivative to look for where the concavity is zero. Okay, so off you go, find your first derivative, find your second derivative, I'll give you a bit of a head start, and as you find features, start to add them onto your graph. Okay, off you go. And we found some stationary points, because we differentiated and got this. There's our first derivative, okay? Now, normally I would go through, and in fact the question asks you to find the nature of these things. However, because I've just asked you to graph, you're going to get these coordinates. Pi on 3 comma 2 is going to be about here and 4 pi on 3 comma negative 2 is going to be about there. Now, I think you can tell me which one of those is a max and which one is a min because of where they are. Okay, now if the question asks you, go ahead and find the nature, but there they, there they are. Um, you'll find your points of inflection and then you'll get this shape that's just going to stop there, which verifies what you would have seen in auxiliary angle last year, okay? So thanks everyone, 